How does a song with a leaking faucet sound, two note synth pattern and a monotone kick drum become a microtonal Phrygian music theory masterpiece? Whew. I said it right this time. For many the song Sexy Back by Justin Timberlake is not the first thing that comes to mind when you hear anybody say microtonal Phrygian music theory masterpiece. And to be honest it also caught me by surprise. One day while doom scrolling on YouTube, a newly uploaded Tiny Desk concert with Justin Timberlake popped up on my feed. And being a Tiny Desk concert fan, I just had to click. I hear them play a beautiful acoustic version of my favorite song What Comes Around Goes Around and they wrap it up ever so nicely with this beautiful line cliche at the end. Still caught in the moment and enjoying what I had just heard, they already started playing Sexy Back, but now on some kind of rock version. I mean, I was almost getting System of a Down vibes here. So there are four strange things going on and while listening to the Tiny Desk Concert version I noticed that the song only has two chords and that it is a Phrygian chord progression. What I also noticed is that I just cannot play along with the original studio version. It just sounds strange. It sounds out of tune all the time. At first I thought it was just me, but also the vocals sound out of tune, so what's going on? I think that the song sounds out of tune because of this synth pattern. When I isolate it, it sounds like this. By itself, it sounds perfectly fine. But when I zoom in, what do you notice? Each of these blobs represents a synth note. If the synth was perfectly in tune, then each blob should be exactly in the middle of the grid. But they are not. They are quite a bit lower. Let me tune the synth and compare it to the out of tune one. It seems that the entire song was built on top of this synth. So it's not strange that the vocals also sound out of tune. Because clearly Justin Timberlake adapts with his intonation to the synth. Right? Not entirely true. Because if the synth is out of tune, but if the vocals are equally out of tune, then as a listener you should not be able to notice anything. But you do. The isolated vocals look like this. The blobs show Justin Timberlake's vocals and you can see that they are never on the grid. They are almost always in between something. You could say that Justin Timberlake here has very loose intonation, but he does this on purpose. Justin Timberlake creates tension, adds soul and extra character to his vocal lines this way. You can find a great example of this in the pre-chorus, where with his vibrato he rises half a step in pitch and this creates an amazing amount of tension. Just listen to how boring it sounds when I tune everything to be perfect. Now what about those two chords that the whole song is built on? And in the studio version it's even only two notes, A and B flat. In the Tiny Desk concert version the guitar plays A and B flat power chords. And power chords are chords that only have two unique tones in them, the root note and the perfect fifth. Power chords give grit to any song and they sound the best when they have overdrive or distortion added to them. If you know how to play these two notes or these two chords then you are all set, you are good to go. But it's what these two notes or two chords imply is what makes it special. The Phrygian mode. 
I think everybody knowingly or unknowingly has heard a Phrygian melody or a Phrygian chord progression before. Because does this sound familiar? The Phrygian mode is like a normal minor scale, but with the second scale degree lowered half a step. And this lowered second scale degree or minor second scale degree is what makes it sound special. In sexy back this minor second scale degree is the B flat. And apart from the chord or synth pattern, you can hear this in all its glory in the chorus melody. I was surprised to find so many songwriting and music theory gems in this song. It's quite amazing. I mean, to top it off in the studio version around 226, you can even casually hear the guitar play a Phrygian dominant scale. Super! If you as a musician, music writer or a music producer want to dive into the musical modes, then check out my new course Modal Playbook. You'll learn the musical modes with 43 bite-sized in-depth video lessons. You can pop in and just do one or two lessons during your coffee break or quickly at night after work. All examples have notes, guitar taps and MIDI files, so everybody can follow along. Follow this easy and structured approach and you'll get the musical modes into your fingers and into your music in no time. I really hope you enjoyed this song analysis. Stay inspired, stay creative, and for now, see you next time.